This is kind of what I've inherited from last night's casking situation. As I just emptied the acid tank, you can hear gurgling away there. So we've got a load of uh, best bitter casks on the floor that actually need uh, putting onto a pallet. I don't have any cask stackers though, that's the problem. So uh, maybe that's something I could address today if possible. Uh, and I'm also gonna get into the shop which is yet to be illuminated behind us. So I want to get in there and start to utilize those shelves that we've installed. Beeswax for the runners. Be a good idea to do that before we actually stack any shelving in there. So I might just run upstairs, have a look on good old tool station, and maybe uh, we'll have a run over to workshop first thing this morning and pick up a few things so we can uh, Get cracked on like. So I've put a couple of shelves in between the drawers to take up any odds and sods like I have mallets and stuff like that don't really have anywhere to live. Now they do, friggin' right they do. And I've also applied some wax. This stuff, the old Brie wax to the whole shebang, which you can probably tell from where you are. and. Uh, that really has made the drawers slide a hell of a lot easier. Uh, but in the meantime, I've just had three deliveries. We got some chemicals from Niche Solutions. We got some stainless steel perforated mesh for the mash tun, and we had a beer delivery. So let's go and have a look at the mesh and the chemicals. Here we go, baby. So, for anybody who's interested, we picked up the nitrosid and the fos gel. These are both for cleaning the deposits off the new tanks. So they'll get rid of all of the uh, carbonate deposits in there, the beer stone, and pacify the stainless as well. This stuff will do that quite well. And then we've got Cosglean Plus, which is what I should be using for all the CIP on the main kit over there. I didn't have any, I only had HyperQuest and Chloroquest, which actually can damage the stainless steel. So uh, now I've got those, then we can save the HyperQuest and Chloroquest for the correct applications, which are like uh, once a month running it through your plate exchanger and that kind of stuff because they're brutal. They're some of the most aggressive cleaners out there. And then finally, here is the perforated steel sheet. So it's one millimeter thick and we've got a, uh, I think it was a one, no, two millimeter hole with a 3.5 millimeter pitch. So that should be sufficient for us to uh, make a decent false bottom. I'll tell you what, when I sat close looking at it then, I had, my eyes couldn't focus, never mind the camera. So I'm gonna drag this into the, uh, into the workshop. We'll see if we can get a rough pattern of the mash tun, or the diameter of the mash tun at the very least. And then we'll get the old circle cutter out that I made for the plasma torch way back in uh, March, April, and We'll cut out a false bottom for the mash tun and weld some 
standoffs and whatnot on it. Yeah, get rid of the copper. Consider a bit. After a considerable bit of grinding and plasma cutting, we've created what I think is an absolute work of art. I think it looks freaking awesome. So this is the solid framework for the false bottom. This is to take the weight of the grain, of course. 3 mil steel, 3 mil stainless. Now this was actually a lid that was too small, so it was going to go to waste. Fortunately, after I cut the outside maybe 10 millimeters off, it fit directly into the mash tun. So creating all these gaps here are where I'm going to weld the perforated steel sheet on. Isn't a chance upstairs. I realise now I've ordered far too much stainless steel perforated sheet, but never mind, we've got it in stock. It was £116 for that full sheet, which wasn't too bad, frankly. So you never know. If people are nice to me, I might make them a false bottom here or there. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So, uh, yeah, all I want to do now is get a... I've got two options. I can just cut a circle, slap it on top, I've done with it, and that's my false bottom. Or I can cut and weld segments into each. But I think I'm for ease and speed, I'm just gonna cut around it as a big circle, slap it on top, tack it in three or four places, and uh, sort of I've done with it, you know? I might even just bolt it on with some stainless bolts instead of uh, tacking it on. Then of course I can remove it in the future if we get grain stuck at the back, you know. So let's give it a whirl, let's get, the, uh, get these bits off of here and we'll put the stainless steel sheet up and we'll cut it.
So I was just putting together the finishing touches on the spiderweb false bottom and uh, I think it's going to work an absolute treat. It feels solid as a rock. I mean it's not flimsy, it's got no play sideways or anything like that. But one thing I just realised was, how do I get it back out again <laughs> once I've dropped it in? Because initially I could put my hands through the holes you see to pull it up. So what I'm going to do, one last thing, is just make a handle out of some stainless steel and we'll just attach a handle to one side of it and then uh, you only need to lift one side and then it's out. So I'll see if I can find some flat bar. If not, I'll have to use a little bit of the threaded bar that I've got left. Ah. Oh. I've actually got a little bit of angle stainless I could use, to be honest. So I'll cut that up and uh, make a nice little angle. Ah, slight change of plan. I actually found some scrap metal in the bin which was from the legs for the main tanks so I just chopped a sliver off and put it through the rollers hey presto steel handle so I'll just weld that on and uh, I think uh, we're ready to try for a fit the finished article that's better so can you get a good look at that yeah so on the back we have the support mechanism the bolts go straight through and become adjustable feet to provide the depth to the base of the mash tun and the handle which actually worked out quite well what do you think to that is not in the way we can mix around it and uh, it's welded on friggin solid so let's drop her in and see how see how she looks there we are so yes indeed folks we now have a false bottom in the mash tun would you just check it Beautiful. Well, you know what? I call that a good day's work, don't you? I think uh, I can wrap it up from here. It is five o'clock. There's no point in me staying till six or seven again because it just does my head in the next morning. So uh, I'm going to call it quits, folks. I feel like I've actually achieved something again. Another day, another job off the list. Awesome. And what we'll do tomorrow? We'll see you then.